the Apollo hospital and open letter to the public. Yes. You are unable to do the treatment to the ma'am Jailalta, actually, Madam Jailalta. So you come final, you become finally to find out that she will be no more on that day. The sequence of events at the end, of course, when the I had been in touch, even though I wasn't in uh, Chennai at that time with the team, and we'd been talking about uh, ongoing care matters. When this event happened, I was informed, although I couldn't get to Chennai in time to help with the care, just because of the realities of the travel distance, I was participating remotely as one of the, a number of people trying to give advice and make sure the right things were done. So I knew what was happening. I released my statement because so many people were uh, approaching me. Like everyone, I was um, surprised. It was out of the blue, the collapse. It was a tragedy when we thought she was on the road to recovery. As I said in my statement, absolutely everything that could have been done in any hospital in the world was done. The Apollo team did a tremendous job with immediate resuscitation and providing ECMO. Most hospitals would not be able to do that. And they did it, and they did it exceptionally well. Professor, just one question. The truth is, though, when patients have cardiac arrests and end up needing ECMO, the outcome is very poor. She was then maintained on the ECMO circuit to, make, to see whether the heart had a chance to recover and start beating again. It did not. And then after an appropriate period, the futility of the situation was accepted. That's what happened. But I couldn't be here in time, I'm sorry to say. But had I been, there was nothing I could have done. Everything that could have been done and should have been done was done. I will take one just final question. Perhaps here, and I'm going to go. One. Okay, I will. I will take two then. One from you and one from you, and okay. then we're done, sir. From me. Okay. Uh, perhaps I just wanted to uh, just taking off from where you left. Uh, uh, as far as the ECMO uh, machine is concerned, isn't it normal practice that you ask uh, the close the patient's closest relative or somebody to take a call on whether this can be, uh, you know, it is futile. So whether a call can be taken on stopping the ECMO support to a patient. Isn't it normal practice to ask a personal a relative? Precisely how this is done is different in different places. Dr. Babu will, will talk to how it was done here, but in the general sense, what is done, because this is a highly technical issue, is that um, the ECMO is run, a whole range of tests are done and manipulations done to try and give the very best opportunity to, uh, for the heart to recover and also to assess the rest of the bodily functions at some point, if it becomes obvious that this is futile and recovery is impossible, then a decision is made to stop. This is communicated and shared with appropriate close family relatives, and then things are stopped. That's the general way it's done. That's how it would be done in my hospital. Obviously, I cannot speak to the precise details of how it was done here, although I imagine that was the process that was followed. Dr. Dr. Babu may wish to comment. So that's exactly the way we did. We, a medical decision was taken uh, after examining that it was futile. That is communicated to all the senior uh, secretaries in the uh, government, ministers who are there, and, and to the family. And no, the decision was ours. Decision was the medical decision. That is an information that is given. So I'm going to take one last question. Treatment bill is about. 5.5 crores, sir. Around 5, 5, 5, 5 to 5.5 crores. Sir, sir. I, I am the, going the to treatment take bill, sir, one minute, sir. Regarding the bill, it is about 5 to 5.5 5 crores, sir. Uh, the, the bill has been handed over to the family. The payment will be made by the family. Ama, ama. Younger Teringer, then I'm on the farm, Pandum Boda, Nangapoi Pathan. Um, and the Marie Nadanda Hill. Was there any, sir, Dr. Babu? Was there any, one minute, madam? Was there any situation where you felt, uh, uh, madam Jailata, madam, did uh, keep any thumb impression anywhere? No. no. To our knowledge, no, sir. No. Right. I'm no. going to take the last question I promised, sir. Thank, thank Please. You. The gentleman in the green shirt, I am not going to be shouted at. So I'm going to take this question from over here, please. Doctor, thank you. My question is, when was the last time Ms. Jairalida spoke? And she was in ICU for more than 75 days. Was there at any time 
a plan to move her home, to treat her from home, and was there an attempt to deliberately keep her indefinitely in the ICU also? I'll pass that uh, over to Dr. Babu. Uh, other than saying the trajectory that was planned was ICU, then room, then when off the ventilator, completely and sufficiently rehabilitated, home or maybe to some form of rehabilitation outside hospital. But uh, tragically, we never quite got to that stage. But he will speak to the detail. So um, to answer your question, uh, uh, she was speaking till the time uh, she had the arrest. Just before she had the arrest, she said she was having, feeling breathless. That's why I put her back on the ventilator. And uh, so till last minute, she was doing that. The other question is the plan. No, that was in the process of being planned. As our chairman had said, she could be sent home anytime she wanted, provided we, uh, we were able to set up everything at home. So people who are taking her home need to be comfortable taking her home to have the physiotherapy nursing care provided. So we were working towards it. Uh, you know, I, and I was made to believe that things were being done at home to get it ready. So... Yeah. So she had finished the physiotherapy, she was tired, she was lying down after the physiotherapy. That time she caught, she's a doctor by the side, she said, I'm feeling a bit uh, breathless. She was only on oxygen, the doctor who was there. Okay, so uh, the doctor put her on a ventilator because she said she is feeling a bit breathless. Okay, we, uh, even after putting on the uh, ventilator, her breathing did not settle, so we did some changes on the ventilator. No, that, uh, there are a lot of medical personnel were there. I don't deal with the bill, sorry ma'am, I don't de deal so, with the bill. So, right. Sir, I was told that the bill comes to about 5 to 5.4 crores approximately. This question can be addressed to the CEO of the hospital, sir. I, I inquired this and came here. But whether it has been handed over, I, I, I was told it was handed over to the family, sir. The CEO of the hospital will be in a correct position. So, uh, sir, I, I, I will uh, clarify it with the Apollo management and come back to you and answer, sir, because I am not aware to whom it was handed over. So, when we again meet, possibly right. when we again meet. This, I'm, I'm a... Uh, I'm afraid this, uh, you are, I'm afraid you are asking questions that we've made clear we cannot answer. We are only able to answer the medical That's questions because those are the only things we have knowledge of and within the parameters I explained at the beginning. Now I think you will agree we have given our time and answered as fairly and honestly as we can for what I have to say has been quite a difficult experience. The last question, sir, shall we wind up the meet? The last, All right, the last then question. this will be the very, please, this will be the very last question and we will not answer another one. Sir, use your last question. I didn't get you. No, sir, you are often mentioning a word called confidential. So what is to be so often confidential which, is, which can't be even revealed in a prescription like this? Okay, I'll, I'll, can I ask you a question? If you fall sick, come into the ICU, would you like every detail of your illness to be told everyone? I'm a CMO, I'll definitely do it, sir. No, I don't <laughs> think so. To say uh, that uh, this is going, I don't, that is fair to anyone, whoever it is. But whatever is available in the public domain, we have answered that. I don't think I can tell you more than this because, as I said, her, her privacy I have to respect. Second, there is a court issue going on too. So based on these two, I cannot say more than this. Whatever is in the public domain, we have explained that. So there we are. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now we must conclude. Okay, we will take yeah. the embalming question, but yeah. that's the only uh, question. I'll, I'll go through the entire process. I'll tell you what all happened. Uh, no, I, am I allowed to speak? Tamil uh, Tamil Both, okay. Okay, fine. 
See, after the former Chief Minister was declared dead, I received a call from both the Secretary for Health and the Health Minister saying an unfortunate incident has happened and I was asked to move my team for embalming. And the team is always in place because we do get private embalming calls and voluntary body donations at Madras Medical College. So I called up my team. I asked them to move to Apollo Hospital and I moved separately because I live in Krompit. Many of you might have seen me walking down the Greens Road that night. I went to the hospital. My team was already in place. We followed the normal embalming procedure. Normal embalming procedure is the femoral artery. We put a catheter in that way, 5 and a half liters pump in. That is the right femoral artery. We did the embalming procedure. There is no leak. But before starting the embalming, of course, I did check everywhere because we need to check. Ena tracheostomy panirke, femoral punctures panirke, adayella na check panna no check pani ne. Ninga soldra inda ipaninga kamcha padathla irikkar adavuk deepa avlo vo palla mana dots illa. Inge moon irundhu. Inno na ninga note panirkala, avangalodiya vodhu kunjo dadi mana terinjudu, which is not the normal. Knowing Madam Jailalita for many years, அவங்க ஒதடு தடிமனா இருந்தது. அனா, as a doctor, I could understand, அது எதனால் என்று, tracheostomy போடும் போது, இங்க anchor பண்ணுவாங்க, போட்டு. Otherwise, it will slip down. Same way, tracheostomyல சில சமையத்தில ventilator போடும் போது, இப்படி போட்டது clamp பண்ண வேண்டி இருக்கும். அந்த clasp வந்து நிச்சிமா, யார் ventilatorல இருந்தாங்களோ, அந்த மாதிரி ventilatorல இவ்வளோ deep dots இல்ல, there were 3-4 dots here, echimotic dots, which I told you earlier also. அந்த echimotic dots, I only thought, okay, tracheostomy, இங்க anchor பண்ணிருக்காங்க, plus, இந்த ventilator இப்படி grass fire இருந்திருக்கு, அப்படின் பார்த்துடு, everywhere else I checked and we started the embalming procedure. And to repeat whatever I have told you, embalming பண்ணம் போது, the whole process took about 15 minutes. Femoral ல, நாங்க right femoral. I will also tell you for those of you, who may not know the procedure, right femoral ले पंग नांगा start पन्न बोधे right side leg के right femoral ले direct आ पोटा अंदर circulation right side leg के करें क्या? So right side leg के मट्टम तानिया मोदला पन्नी टे which took about three four minutes after which we started pumping it through the entire body through the entire body पन्न बोधे except for mucosal leaks where एंगियो कुंजो lips ले कुंजो in the nostrils, there were mucosal leaks. That apart, there were no other leaks. The color did not change. Of course, embalming fluid, if you mix it, if you mix it, instead of using the normal formalin, or two and a half liters formalin, we used a little isopropyl alcohol because madam, our complexion, everyone knows, the pinkish complexion, formula na reduce pannita, I took a decision of using more isopropyl alcohol. This is what happened and I will not be able to answer why the dots are appearing much deeper in the social media. Enak 11.35.36 on the time to call phone one to this. Enak health minister on phone panna are, health secretary on phone panna are. Thank you. Excuse me. 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 Hey, come on. 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 H